Let's go on the beautiful map Vault in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22, a 2v2 match. Everybody is picking random and we get to play double Gondor, me and Balindru. Okay. You know, Gondor, I like Gondor a lot, but Gondor is not the strongest faction on the map Vault. The strongest one would be definitely Mordor, then Rohan, then Isengard, and then, unfortunately, Gondor. But it's fine, we will make it work. Uh, we will actually need to cancel eventually the farm because I will not be able to buy the farms outside. Volchek, that's an evil faction player top and good faction player bottom. Let's cancel the farm, this way we can buy the farms outside a bit faster, you know? We don't need to wait. That's the plan. Keep wall checking just to make sure. Yeah, it's an evil faction player and he's going to be our target too because we need to uh, crash the evil's economy as soon as possible. There are just too many settlements on the map vault, and if we don't do that, he will grow rich, and we have not a single chance. Okay, so let's buy the farm, and also use the Hobbit Peregrine Took to buy all the other settlements. Then, we will need to save up for the stable, and we will need a lot of Gondonites in this matchup, on this map at least. Oh, my ally is fighting. He should be using definitely the Alvin Wood. Because otherwise you cannot fight against the Uruks when they have Warchant. It's not possible. And what is the other player doing? That's what I'm wondering about. Uh, but this is a free settlement. I take it. That's pretty nice for me. Because in total I will have now 5 farms outside. Which is, you know, a lot of food bonus. Again, we will spam a lot of Gounder Knights. And for that reason we will need as much discount as potentially possible. Let's use the Elven Wood for our ally, so he can actually try to destroy the mill. Oh, but Rohan. Okay, so Isengard Rohan. So Rohan is gonna try to defend his ally's mills, which is okay. Um, and kinda unfortunately, we actually invested now the Elven Wood for our ally. That means we have nothing to boost or to heal those soldiers. So we need to just try to make it to the settlement as soon as possible. So, but eco-wise, it's looking great. In about a minute and a half, we will be able to make so much money if we can keep those settlements protected. But Rohan has the chance to spam a lot of additional peasants, and with them, we can crash our eco big time. Um, we, we, I don't know, man. I think we won't be able to destroy the farm boys. Okay. I mean, at least we put pressure on him. That's pretty good for us. And now we need to save up for the stable. Yeah, the mill cannot be destroyed, unfortunately. But we can maybe buy these settlements at the top right corner. It's better than nothing. You need to move, man. I mean, he gotta move now. Because I cannot buy the settlement. Can you please move? Here, go away. <laughs> okay, sorry. So, yeah. He's uh, moving. That's me. That means I will be able to purchase the... Or to capture the farm, right? Uh, which is great. More money. And also, you know, it's like a... Uh, win win situation. Because not only we will get more money. But also, Isengard is not able to capture this settlement for himself, which means less money for Isengard. It's a win-win thing in my book. The Hobbit needs to chase down those peasants all the time. The farm here has been taken down, but it's fine. We have still in total five farms outside, which is more than enough. And the Gondonites, which normally would cost 800, will now cost only 600 because of the huge food bonus we will get. My ally should be able to win this fight. On the Elven Wood, you will get additionally 25% uh, increased armor, which is pretty nice. Let's keep chasing, and we will need more and more and more Gondonites. And with the very first Gondonite, what we need to do is to destroy the meals from the Isengard player. I mean, on the map vault, if you don't know, there are plenty of creeps. Goblin layers, work layers, so lots of options to get as many power points as you need to eventually unlock the Ranger summon from the Spellbook of Gondor, uh, which will be definitely helpful when it comes to rush the Isengard base, because Isengard against double Gondor needs to spam lots of pikemen. And now you might be calling me crazy, but why would you spam Gondor Knights then? Because they are quite mobile and it's a big map. So I need some mobile units on the field to be able to contest the Rohan faction also when it comes to keep those settlements protected and destroy the enemy settlements. Let's deal with the peasants first and Hobbit should be able to chase them down. Not a big deal. And now let's move on. They have attacked! Men of Gondor! Together Knights, come! Rally together, knights! Rally together, knights! 
Knights of Minas Tirith. They've already taken this area. Onwards. Okay, so um, we will definitely need to ignore the farm for now and destroy the mill instead. Um, now we have the second gun right on the field, that's good. Let's check the bottom right area. This mill should be still unprotected and we should be able to take it down. Okay, so let's build a well and after three Gondonites we will definitely make the transition into the upgrades but our base is looking empty so we need to fill it up first with black smokes and the reason why we have black smokes in North Farms is because of the steel bonus. So every resource building we are building up in Battle for Middle Earth 1 will provide you with some sort of bonuses. For example, farms. They give you the food bonus and food... Bo oh, oh, oh. Can we fight this? Yes, war chant. You have no elven wood yet. Oh, oh, we gotta peel back. We gotta peel back. Run. <laughs> okay. I mean, he even healed. All right, it's okay. I mean, we were able to save the Gunner Knight. That's all it that matters. Losing them early on is pretty painful and they are too late to the party and the creep is going to be secured by the Rohan player. And which is not the best case for us, but it's fine. Could be much worse. So now, deny Isengard as much money as we potentially can. That's very important. A bit Meriodak Brandybuck. He has still the Warchan. I think we cannot fight them. Maybe we can with the Elven Wood. I'm gonna use Elven Wood here and fight him on the, on the Elven Wood, which means we will have additional armor. Hopefully, it's gonna be enough to make our Gondor Knights a bit stronger because his Rohirrim are higher leveled. It means he has still the chance of winning this. As you can see, look how hard this is. Like, that's what I'm telling you guys every single time. The level of advantage in Battle for Middle of One is massive. But we are still... My ally even healed me. That was not really necessary, but it's fine. Let's creep the war player. We have now three Gondor Knights on the field, which requires lots of macro, and we need to try our best to keep them alive. Oh, kill back. Go back, go back, go back. Okay. I mean, we are cash looting so much. Dude, I'm rusty, guys. I'm telling you. I'm really rusty. <laughs> Long time ago, since, uh, you know, I was playing actively multiplayer games. We have one power point collected. Let's go for the heal. Because I want to get Gandalf to bite. So we could skip the heal and go for it for the Elven allies or Ranger allies, rather. Sorry. Uh, instead. But uh, Rangers are not the best when it comes to deal with the Rohirrim. So for that reason, I think the most solid choice for us would be definitely to get the Gandalf to bite power point from the Spellbook of Gondor and to recruit Gandalf to bite. We can try to take, the, take it down and then peel back right after. Destroy, destroy. Come on. Nice. Now we can peel back. We don't need to fight this. Deal economical damage. We don't have to always take a fight. Especially when you realize, okay, the enemy units are stronger than mine. And obviously it's a mistake when you take a fight. And in Battle Formula of 1, it's quality over quantity. That means keeping your units alive means they will be higher leveled eventually. And then they will be also much more impactful and much stronger. I'm pretty tempted to buy the outpost and build additional farms on it. Um, just to make sure that we have a lot of money, you know? That's the plan. But we cannot afford it for now. Um, because I want to go for the for the rush. So I want to go for the rush with like two, three Gondor Knights, shields, which will give us the tankiness we need to fight against the enemy towers and eventually bleeds and we have enough dps and enough tankiness to actually keep staying in the enemy castle without blades it's also good but with blades it's just much much better because then you will get the chance to kill the structures much much faster okay blades let's hope that he has not enough pikemen on the field and we can make something work the first rush of the game I mean, he has no defense in the castle. Oh, he has one pikeman, okay? So we need to try... Oh, he's even war chanting them for more damage and armor. But that's not necessary because I'm not planning to fight them. I'm just trying to take down the Uruk if I can. But it's... Oh, he has one more pikeman. Okay, abort, abort the mission, abort the mission. I don't want to lose the Gundam Knights. Please, please move! Okay, we can at least take one of the furnaces down. But even Rohan is coming now to spot his ally. Oh my goodness, man. He has even heavy armor. Heavy armor is better than the Forge Bleeds. It looks like our rush is not going to be successful. So, <laughs> that's pretty unlucky. But good thing is, you see what I mean? Like, at the moment, as we are putting pressure, my ally has freedom. And also, you know, our settlements are kind of protected. Because the pressure we are putting on the, on the Isengard player draws also the attention from the Rohan player. They need to react to that. So most of the time, offense is the best defense. Oh, and, hey, 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 let's heal them. <laughs> okay, we cannot stay here. 
He has even Theodian in horses coming. Oh, please move. Don't get slowed down like that. Don't get slowed down like that. Move. Let's hope that he has no Palance here. If he has Pal if he has Pal what is he doing? Oh, he oh, my Hala actually healed me. Oh, that's pretty nice from him. Yeah, I saw that. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, I mean, I believe the Isengard player wasn't paying attention. The Pikes followed us all the way to our allies' base. <laughs> Oh, but he's gonna lose them. Okay, for the next rush, we will have also heavy armor, which means even more durability and more tankiness. But we also we cannot, uh, you know, ignore the map control. That means we should be at least having one Gonda Knight additionally to make sure that our settlements are greatly protected. Because when we rush Isengard blindly with all what we got, uh, he might be able to destroy all the settlements we got. So I want to buy the outpost um, for additional money. Keep putting pressure on him all the time. And after the outpost, we might actually try to save up for the Gandalf. And by the time Gandalf comes, we can also eventually get the power points, hopefully, I mean, to turn him into the Gandalf the White. Because Gandalf the Grey is not the greatest hero. He's very sloppy. He's like really long cooldown on his abilities and also doesn't even get the chance to use the easter life because easter life is an ability you can only use from gandalf when you have gandalf the white so long story short uh, when you have gandalf the gray it's better to not even recruit him for 6000 in most cases because he's the most expensive hero i mean witch king is basically more expensive but uh, mordor has also easier time to gather all the money unlike gondor you know I mean, he has many, many pikemen inside the castle. He has like three pikemen, which is... Uh, need 2.5 more for Gandalf. That's nice. That's good. Okay, then at some point of the game, we will have double Gandalf. And double Gandalf means double trouble. Hopefully, we will make it work. Swords! I mean, for me, it's really hard, boys, at this point, to deal economical damage to Isengard because he's playing super defensively. He has lots of units he's using for the defense exclusively. Lots of pikemen, which are the best counter at this point against our Gunner Knights. Uh, long story short, it's not looking good for me. Gandalf obviously can change a lot of this stuff. Um, but until then, it's going to be kind of... And it's tough. Okay, great. Great, great, great. I mean, sorry guys, I'm a little bit too focused. <laughs> because, you know, there is so much happening on this map. Maybe you don't, you don't pay attention to that, but... I need to always keep an eye on the minimap, always need to make sure that every settlement is protected. You know, kind of get them back when I when I, lo when I lose them. And also, oh, look how many pikemen. We need to always take a, take a look into every single step we take. We can turn and fight this on the Alvin Wood. On the Alvin Wood, not only we will get additional armor, but also the enemy units are going to lose their leadership bonuses. It means the enemy leadership is getting completely negated. So let's keep the pressure up on him. Um, my ally has also lots of Gondor Knights on the field. Maybe one of us should be making the transition into something that can shoot and that can deal with the Rohirrim and also the enemy pikemen, which is easier said than done. Because the problem is that um, Gondor and Gondor combination has not enough leadership to fight against Isengard and Rohan. They have Theorin, which grants you 30% more damage and 50% more armor for free, you know, from level 1. And they have Warchan, which means... I lost the Gondor Knights. They have Warchan, which means 50% more damage and armor. They have eventually later on Saruman, Aragorn, every one of these heroes giving you leadership from minute to one when they enter the battlefield. And the main weakness of the Gondor army is the lack of leadership. You have only Gandalf, who grants you 50% more damage and 100% more combat experience. But every other hero, Farami and Boromi, they need, first of all, some levels. And even if you get to this point, remember, Isengard is a power point from the spellbook, which is called Freezing Rain. And with it, it will be able to watch, uh, to completely negate and destroy our leadership bonuses we get. 
So for that reason, we kind of counting on Gandalf, and we kind of counting on the Gondor Knights. That's all we can count on, at least for now. But later on, when we purchase the outpost, we can make something happen. Let's get Gandalf to white. And um, then we will also need to build a marketplace just to make sure, you know what I'm saying? You know, for the worst case scenario, get enough money with the Grand Harvest. There are many, many settlements outside and Grand Harvest would mean that we get 40% more money from the farms outside and inside the castle. Okay, so this one is looking actually pretty okay for now because the enemy team is kind of in a, in, a, in a turtle situation. So as long as we can keep them right here on the spot, we should be good and we should be skilling. We even covered the Elvin wood. Okay, that's what it is. I think it's time to buy some outposts, you know? Even though I'm not sure if we can protect them all the time. But we gotta try. Let's build the archery range here because we can put the archers later on inside the outpost. This way, the outpost will have a greater protection. Let's build a statue on a well for sustain and additional damage armor leadership around it. Um, okay. Hopefully, it's not going to be destroyed anytime soon because I need to recruit three Gondor archers to get it to level two first for the for the chance to recruit some rangers, which are the best archers of the Gondor faction. Okay, so Grand Harvest is kicking in. That's pretty nice. I mean, yeah, we can actually go for a sneaky plague with Gondor with Gandalf, but. Remember, our ally, uh, our opening is Isengard, right? And they have the best counter <laughs> to our Gandalf, and that's Cripple from Lourdes. That means our Gandalf won't be able to play the game for like 30 seconds, which is more than enough time for the enemy team to destroy our Gandalf. And that's the reason why I don't want to take the risk. And now you might be wondering, but why not? Because the thing is, as long as my... G oh my goodness. As long as my Gandalf is on the field, he's a threat. An enemy needs to respect it. But what will happen if I lose my Gandalf? Then enemy knows, okay, Gandalf is down, now we can make a move. So Gandalf's presence only can put so much pressure on the enemy team. They need to respect it. So we have two of them. Two Gandalfs. Double trouble. <laughs> so with that being said... The enemy has to play extremely carefully until, you know, until they will be able to kill our Gandalfs, which is not going to happen anytime soon, hopefully. I mean, here's Glorious Charge. Theodin is level 4. That's not the best thing because our archers, <laughs> they will get one shot. They have no chance. Let's sell them because I want to actually get some Gondor Rangers, not archers. And... We need some space in the command point, so we can sell them to the Citadel in the castle. Double Gandalf, boys. Look at the bad boys. Look at the bad boys. Is he paying attention? Hopefully not, but I guess they are. So Isengard, and that's the thing, you know, because even if I want to do something now and try to attack the Isengard, I can't. Because he has like all his army at one point. How can I go there with Gondonites and try to make something happen? I need to kind of get some more archers on the field, eventually some siege weapons, so we can finally start sieging uh, the Rohan castle instead. Maybe that's the that's the way to go. I don't know. Maybe Boromir, Faramir could be a nice choice. If we can get them to level 4, to level 5, for their leadership to be unlocked. Because our army, even though it looks strong, uh, yeah, my ally is also the uh, marketplace. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would like to put some rangers instead of the archers so, and send them to the bottom right side because I would like to get the outpost if I can and build the siege works there. And also eventually some barracks to recruit some tower guards as a counter unit to the Rohirrim. We should be quite rich in this game. I mean, I think money-wise, we should be definitely ahead. Our team, Balindru and me, in compared to Rohan and Isengard. My ally is also outpost. That's pretty good. In the middle. Now we can buy the third outpost. We have already one at the very left side. Get more and more ranges on the field. Okay, so they might commit very soon. They might commit very soon. Hopefully, we will be prepared for that one. I mean, Isengard, Rohan army is pretty strong. Especially with the Glorious Charge. They can charge and they can become almost immortals. And even Gandalf won't be able to hurt the Rohirrim. Oh my, that's a big army, boys. Oh my goodness. 
Yeah, Not gonna lie, I'm a little bit scared. Because the fight, you know, that's like a build. Or, uh, this game was feeling like a build-up game. I think this game is building up to a one single, one singular big fight. And I also believe that everything is going to be decided out of this fight. Oh my goodness, they are coming, boys! They are coming, boys! Okay, let's build the siege forks in the meantime. And yeah, I think the only way we can win this fight is fighting around the, around the statue. Let's build the barracks for some tower guards. Um, and hopefully we will have the time we need. Because if they come now, I mean, again, our only chance and bet is to fight around this area. With the wall behind for the sustain and with the statue behind for additional damage and armor, maybe we get the chance to fight and win. I gotta be careful with Gandalf though. Because Gandalf, as strong as he is, is extremely vulnerable against damage. So he's not a tank. He is like a squishy, squishy, you know, hero. It means he will die extremely fast. Okay, Bar Forami, Baram, I can't even talk. Boromir and Faramir, please stand up next to each other. We need three of these Gondor soldiers to get it to level two. Okay, they are coming. Glorious swords. Okay. Now we gotta be careful, boys. I mean, our rangers are shooting from a safe this. Let's use the Alvin Wood. Okay, my ally used the Alvin Wood first. He then is charging in. What a fiesta fight. Oh, I missed the Visa Plus. Oh my goodness. I covered the... They are on my land right now, I think, right? Yeah, they are on my land. They have no leadership bonuses. Let's use... The, oh, my Gandalf. Oh, he even healed you. Oh my... No! Okay, gun. No. What? My heal... Come on, come on, have Holy moly, what a fiesta fight this is, okay? I don't know what's going on, but we need to revive Gandalf once again. I'm gonna summon the rangers behind, and hopefully my allies Gandalf is also gone. No way! But we are kind of winning this fight. We are getting also lots of power points collected. I don't know if we can win it. Boromir is level 4. He also affects the units inside the statue, inside the citadel. It means statue plus Boromir, they have now 110% more damage. Which look look how much damage they are dealing, you know. The, the, the rangers inside. The heroes, which are invisible. I mean, that was a good fight. I only lost one single Gondor Knight. That's not horrible. And my remaining Gondor Knights are highly leveled. Oh, he left the game? Oh, because my ally was rushing his base during all this time. Oh, I see you. He left the game, dude. Why? I think that was not necessary. Men of Gondor. Rangers. Okay, I think it's time to siege uh, the Rohan player. Because he keeps playing in a 2v1 situation. Now, um, because his ally left, the Rohan player gets also the base and the castle from his ally. It means he has now two castles, which is pretty good for him. He has now lots of money. Riders, Knights of Minas Tirith. But we are two against one. And even with double castle, you can't be on point as two players. You know what I'm saying? So we have also almost full map control. We can keep pressuring him all the time. And our first thing is going to be the castle at the bottom right side. We have the trebuchet now. We can also give them fire stones to make them hit like a truck. And look for a beast rush. But the thing is, the durability now of the Eisenhardt Castle is pretty insane. With all the level 3 furnaces, it's so hard to deal the damage you are looking for. And here's still pikemen inside. We need to avoid them. My ally is summoning rangers too. Here comes Elma, the horse lord of Rohan. But I don't think he has the chance in the, the damage to deal with our army. And Gandalf is almost back on the menu, boy. So, remember the Isengard player left. And even though the Rohan player got all the army from Isengard after Isengard left, you don't get the chance to recruit the Isengard heroes. It means there is no Lourdes on the field as we are talking. Without Lourdes, our Gandalf is able to do whatever he wants. It's very hard for the Rohan player to deal with two Gandalfs at the same time. Unless you glorious charge, but then we can always disengage. So, we gotta make sure that we protect the trebuchet with the tower guards that's very important and yeah let's start the siege in the porcupine formation shield wall keep sieging all the time 
We will be able to break one part of the wall in no time and then we can go inside with the Gundam Knights. Okay, so Gandalf is back on the many boys. Get mounted on your shadow fags. Gandalf the White, Mifrandia. I'm sorry that I lost you. My Gandalf was horrible today. Like, literally, he couldn't kill anything and he got killed. And that's why it's so painful when I play as Gondor against Ice. What? Okay, he's going for a sneak attack with the ends. I see you. I hope my ally will be able to defend himself. I mean, here's the outpost. Even if he loses somehow the castle, he won't be defeated, but... I don't want him to actually lose the entire castle to the one in summon. Oh, but Rohan has also lots of Rohirrim there. Okay, that makes way more sense. Now we gotta go back with Gandalf and help him. Because if Rohan decides to go in with the Glorious Charge, and this many Rohirrim might, you know, if he is smart, he will just focus down the structures and it's going to be over. And you can just not simply rebuy a castle. Castles are too expensive. 5,000 has to be invested. In the meantime, just destroy the Rohan castle as, you know, as long as we can. He has nothing to defend us. That means our guards and Boromir and Faramir side by side. Boromir is level 4, has leadership. Faramir is level 5, has also leadership. Heal is being used. Let's go. Zaplas, boom. Oh, <laughs> okay. So I, I will never right click on my Zaplas anymore. Let me tell you that much. Kill Thierry. Boom. Level almost 7. Gandalf, that's good. I can now use the lightning sword too. Okay, kill him. Nice. Gandalf level 7. Three more levels from the War of Power. In the meantime, the Rohan castle is falling apart. Because Rohan was going for our all-out potential. We can also get the eagles. I mean, you know, just like as Pedigree took would like to see the eagles. The eagles are coming. And just focus on the map control in the meantime, just to make sure that we cut all the resource income from the Rohan player. Because he won't be defeated yet, as he has another castle from his ally. Maybe he has some heroes like Legolas, Gimli, Aragorn. You gotta be careful and don't give him too much time. There is no reason to give him time. Just finish this game as soon as possible. Okay, the farm is going down. Look our money, dude. I'm telling you guys, when you go for the marketplace early and the game lasts a while, it's one of the best investments into the lead game. You know, obviously it won't be effective at the very first couple of minutes after you buy it, but every minute passing through after like five to six minutes, it's going to be such a great tool to have this additional juicy resource income. 40% from the farms, that's a lot, especially on a map like Vault, in which you have plenty of settlements. Maybe it's not very good on a small map like Rohan in a one-on-one -on -one situation, but on this kind of maps, it's definitely a great choice. Okay, so I, I've seen Aragorn, but it's fine. What can Aragorn do against such a reckless seat? Nothing. Oh my goodness, man, what I... <sighs> hey, man, I left... <laughs> I left the Zaplas on auto. Oh, man. My bad, my bad. I feel so lazy today, you know what I'm saying? And normally when I play... When I, play <laughs> I can't even talk. And normally when I play with Gandalf, I'm always paying lots of attention over Gandalf that I'm trying to not lose him and then I end up losing all my Gondonites and all my other heroes. But this time I'm trying to actually not to pay attention, too much attention to, to Gandalf at least and I want to be, become better when it comes to macro, you know? Macroing all the units. Let's buy the castle. Let's keep the pressure up on him. Let's select the trebuchet and select one by one. Look, one here, one here and one here. Just hit them like a truck. And Gandalf might, might be able to catch them off guard because they need to rotate, they need to micro around because if the trebuchet hits, they will hit hard, trust me. Go Gandalf! Mifrandia! Right! And the sound rises! Do it, do it, do it! Okay, not the best, to be honest with you. And look how much damage he's taking from Anduril's Sword of Aragorn. We have triple stable, but we cannot even recruit anymore. <laughs> we have you know, no space in the command points anymore. My allies, uh, Aragorn, <laughs> Gandalf is also inside. Now our trebuchet are gonna go down one by one, but I think this game is over. There is no way you can defend such a force. We have, you know, rangers there, Boromir, Farami coming to the party as well. Let's build full farms because we can afford it. Build even towers. Because money, as you can see and tell, at the bottom left side of your screen is no problem for us. Everything is bueno, boys. It's unfavorable matchup, by the way, Gondor, double Gondor against Rohan Isengard. It's a bad matchup for double Gondor, definitely. Rohan Isengard should have the advantage in a matchup like this. But there is no bad matchup, you know what I'm saying? There is only the better team and the team synergy. 
And everything is falling apart. The Eagles are getting spawned. I'm gonna use heal just because I can. And as the last buildings are falling, I want to say thank you guys for watching. I hope this was enjoyable for, we, for you. If it was, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. Subscribe for more content like this in the future. I will try to play a bit more actively in multiplayer games now in Battle for Middle of 1. And let me know which one in a 1v1 to v2 would you like to see the next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, keep hitting like a truck and stay beyond standards. Peace out.